and then we will start the slideshow. And I'm going to be hitting broadcast in three, two, one. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us here for our afternoon with CAA and Rocky Mountaineer as we present Canada's West Coast. My name is Leslie Scarf, and I work in the Stittsville store, a suburb of Ottawa and CAA Northeastern Ontario. We are very pleased that you're able to attend today's information travel talk with our colleague Tyler Harrison from Rocky Mountaineer as we journey into extraordinary adventures. And Tyler, over to you. Okay, thanks so much, Leslie, for that great intro. Thank you all for joining us on this Thursday afternoon. Uh, I know for many of us in Ontario, there's uh, not so much where we're able to be doing outside, so it's great to be connecting with all of you and spending the afternoon here. My name is Tyler Harrison. I am the Eastern Canada rep for Rocky Mountaineer. I'm super excited to be here today just to sort of walk through um, all the ins and outs of Rocky Mountaineer, the product, uh, the onboard train experience, uh, but also diving into the destinations of Canada's West Coast, Vancouver, BC, Alberta, um, Lake Louise, Banff, all of these uh, amazing uh, destinations in Canada that sometimes us Canadians uh, forget to uh, explore. But I think this is absolutely the year 2021 where a lot of us will be doing that. So let's just uh, get this train rolling and uh, move on to topics for today. There's a lot of e learning learning going on in the world right now. So I guess this is my, um, my lesson plan for the day. Uh, for those of you who uh, maybe were interested in going on the Rocky Mountaineer in years past or 2020, um, obviously we weren't uh, able to operate last year. So I want to give a quick update of what we have in store for 2021. In fact, I um, 2020 was supposed to be our 30th anniversary, so I don't know if this year technically counts as our 30th anniversary or 31st. Uh, I, I Jokingly around the office, they've been saying that 31 is the new 30. Um, of course, we'll be uh, touching on some health and safety updates, just everything that's going on for the logistics of how train travel is going to look in 2021 and potentially beyond. Also giving you some of the tools and resources where you can find that information for yourself on our website and some of those various resources. And then diving deep into what the Rocky Mountaineer is, what the experience uh, sort of entails and what makes it so great. Um, putting together all of those different components that uh, make a Rocky Mountaineer uh, experience so unique, what you can do on the train, off the train, everything in between, how long an itinerary, what uh, um, directions do you want to travel in, what time of year can you travel, and then of course, who doesn't love a good deal, so let's talk about the current promotions that we have to get you on the train for 2021 um, to make it our best season ever, and then also some of the changes in our uh, enhanced booking policies for this year. And then of course, let's open it up to questions. So I saw a few people with raised hands. If you want to just use the um, 
the chat function or the Q&A function. Um, probably the, uh, the chat function is the best to use. Uh, type it in there and then we'll get to it at the end. Um, and uh, hopefully if I'm doing a good enough job, then uh, maybe I'll be answering some of those questions along the way. But uh, absolutely, if we don't get to everything, then uh, I would absolutely urge you to reach out to your CAA NEO uh, travel consultant because uh, I've been doing some training sessions with them uh, recently. So they are fully aware and up to date on everything that's going on with Rocky Mountaineers. So let's just jump into uh, what we have in store for 2021. Um, this is the, the the feature attraction what we've all been waiting for. Um, again, unfortunately not able to operate in 2020 due to the situations surrounding COVID, but April 27th, we are very happy to be welcoming people back on the train again. Uh, just in terms of schedule changes from this year compared to years past, uh, everything is sort of business as usual as much as possible. Of course, there have been a lot of changes internally and uh, on the operation side of thing. We are starting the, the season just a little bit later, uh, about a week or two later than we normally do, but we will be running through uh, April, May, June, July, August, September, and all the way into the first week of October. So um, as more information comes up uh, about um, our, our schedule and season and uh, opening day, you can absolutely read about that on our website, rockymountaineer.com. Uh, but uh, before we jump into all of the different uh, options, what you can do on the train, uh, I do want to take a, a moment just to touch on health and safety because it is such an important um a narrative that uh, is being talked about today, whether whether it's in travel or just in our daily lives, and we really want you to know at Rocky Mountaineer that your health and safety are of our highest priority. In fact, it's our only priority. We're doing our best uh, ever since the, um, the shutdowns uh, last March to follow government guidelines at the provincial and uh, federal levels um, to really reinvent and optimize our best practices uh, to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and anything beyond that uh, while you're on the train traveling through uh, the western part of Canada. So uh, please always keep that in mind that this is our number one and really only priority when it comes to operating the train safely and securely for you. There's so many changes that uh, will be going on and continuing to go on. Uh, what we like to say is a, a fluid situation. So I can't really go into detail about every single thing because it, it is constantly evolving. But what I can tell you are some of the things that will look slightly different um, in 2021 from years past. Uh, social distancing, a very popular buzzword that I think we're all used to and uh, maybe we're sick of by now, but it's certainly something that we will be uh, implementing in that Rocky Mountaineer experience, whether it comes in uh, boarding your coach transfers to and from the hotels to and from the train station, how we actually board the train is going to look different this year from years past. It's not going to be everybody just waiting in the station uh, for their time to load. It's going to be a staggered uh, situation. We are looking at optimizing all of our check-in procedures just to make them as smooth and seamless as possible, doing pre-travel screening, uh, electronic kiosks uh, to check into hotels in advance, um, and really ensuring that there's the least amount of, I guess, crossover or cross-contamination between other travelers. So uh, when you are traveling on the Rocky Mountaineer, I hope you do get to know the uh, the train mates that are in your car because you'll be seeing a lot of them and uh, that also goes with our guest services and hosting crew. There won't be any movement uh, between the train cars. I know that's a question that always comes up. Even before COVID, that wasn't something that we were doing, moving people back and forth between the train cars. So uh, the guests, the uh, the service hosts, as well as the, uh, the food beverage culinary team, they will all be confined to that one train. Um, some of the uh, physical differences that you'll notice on the train this year from years past that we're looking at optimizing our air filtration system. Another question, that we always get asked on the Rocky Mountaineer. Uh, is it uh, recycled air like we see on, on an airplane or is it fresh air coming in and out? And it is in fact fresh air that we are cycling from outside the train and bringing it in. But this is a, a process that we are looking at optimizing. Um, certainly um, making best use of current technology to upgrade our uh, sanitization of the train after each, each usage to make sure that it is ready for uh, the next day, the next leg of your journey. And uh, from what we're told, there's a, a very high tech, fancy electrostatic disinfectant spray that they will be using. Um, 
but really all aspects of the train journey are going to be uh, under scrutiny. Um, certainly the food, beverage, culinary side of things, uh, because that is such an important part of the experience, we wanna make sure that is safe and secure as well. And really also working with partners that we can count on and trust uh, on the hotel side of thing, the coach transfers side of thing, uh, day trips, hiking, uh, add-ons to your itineraries and those outdoor activities. Um, all of that is really, really important uh, to make sure that they're taking the same preventative measures that we are uh, just to ensure that the health and safety of all the guests uh, from beginning to the end are ensured. So those are some of the things I can tell you that we're working on right now. Some of that could change before opening day on April 27th. But if you want to learn more, if you're someone who uh, is a bit of a keener bookworm and uh, you, you want to keep up to date on this, I can point you to uh, our Rocky Mountaineer website where we do have some great resources on this. If you scroll to the very bottom of our main page, you'll see this sub menu and I want to highlight the preparing to go section as well as the COVID-19 landing page. They're, they're both a little bit different, but we'll give you um, a variety of information. The preparing to go section is just a really great uh, landing page for you for when you've decided to book your trip and really this gets you ready for you know your cross Canada journey, what you need in terms of travel documentation, uh, what you need before you leave home, uh, train schedules, locations of everything. Um, really, this is kind of your, your go-to for that. Uh, but also our COVID-19 landing page just has everything that we are updating uh, about that situation internally for Rocky Mountaineer, our, our schedule, our season, uh, anything to do with health and safety measures, there's a subsection on there as well. So I would urge you, um, if you are interested in keeping up to date on that, then please check out our website. It is uh, uh, the best source for all of that. But having said that, let's jump into what the Rocky Mountaineer is, why you all came uh, to this webinar this afternoon. So we, we can talk about the, the majesty and grandeur of uh, the BC and Alberta wilderness. Uh, there you have the overview of where the Rocky Mountaineer is operating in Canada. Another question we always get asked um, is, where do you sleep on the train? And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cut that one off right away. Uh, hopefully there's no sleeping on the train whatsoever because the Rocky Mountaineer is a daytime only uh, travel experience. So depending on which direction you're traveling in and uh, what time of year, um, you, you'd be leaving in the morning, uh, roughly at around eight in the morning. Your travel day could be anywhere between sort of six to eight hours while you're on the train. It's a very leisurely pace uh, around 30 to 30 35 miles per hour and really your your only uh, scheduled stop is getting to your, your next destination at the end of the day. So um, we do have the, the ability to sort of slow down and uh, really in, enjoy the ride, enjoy the scenery. That's where you're going. So on this map, you can see the three different routes that we offer. Uh, the green line is the rainforest to the gold rush to the north. That's our, our longest and north, most northern route. Uh, first passage to the west is the red line, uh, your most southern route connecting Van Vancouver to Lake Louise and Banff, and then journey through the clouds, uh, starting or ending in Vancouver, moving through Kamloops, and then up towards Jasper. Uh, we will get into uh, which direction you can go, how to combine different routes, everything you can do on and off the train, but just want to give you uh, an overview of where the train is actually operating. This is sort of your first starting point uh, of where you can uh, begin planning your journey. Um, think of Vancouver, Jasper, Lake Louise, and Banff as your main outposts. Those are really where you can dive into those destinations and add on days before or after. Then you'd be on the train for two or three days, maybe longer if you want to combine more routes, um, traveling through Kamloops, Whistler and Quinell, those are your intermediary stopping points. So you're not able to add on days while you're on the train there, but you're absolutely welcome to double back afterwards if you have friends or family or want to check out one of those amazing destinations. So uh, regardless of which uh, route you're doing, what time of year, uh, which direction, what's always going to stay consistent is how 
uh, your day on the train is going to look. So as I mentioned, it's a fairly early morning. You'd be getting a wake-up call at your hotel, probably 6, 6.30 in the morning, something like that. But don't worry. Uh, we have everything taken care of. You actually don't even need to worry about your luggage. You leave that in the room and our guest service team will take that, put it on a separate truck, bring it to your next destination. So whether that's Kamloops, Whistler, or Quinnell, it'll meet you in your destination. Uh, you'll be pre-checked in, so you don't have to worry about that. So really, all you have to do is worry about waking up in the morning and then bringing whatever you want on the train with you. There's um, a tremendous amount of legroom and space on the train, so absolutely you can accommodate, you know, a day bag, um, a duffel bag, anything like that. Depending on the time of season that you're traveling in, you might want a, a, a light sweater or a, a light jacket or something like that, but do keep in mind that the train cars are climate controlled and uh, we can uh, regulate the temperature, so you're not going to be uh, in the sweltering heat of the summer or too chilly in the spring or late fall but really once the uh, coach brings you to your train and you board wheels uh, rolling by 8 a.m in the morning that is your job done you can absolutely sit back and relax and let rocky mountaineer and our guest service team uh, just take care of everything else uh, as you can see in the picture there what's sort of involved well um, there there's gourmet food so you will be served breakfast hot and fresh ready in the morning uh, you'll get a, a gourmet lunch as well midday uh, a bevy of uh, snacks and also um, unlimited beverage service throughout the day, alcoholic, non-alcoholic. We like to get the day started with uh, a non-alcoholic toast uh, just to get everyone uh, familiarized. And then once the train's rolling, uh, it's up to you how you want to spend your time. Again, if you're a picture taker, a videographer, you're going to have more than enough opportunity to uh, take some beautiful shots from your seat or you could uh, go out to one of the outdoor viewing platforms and really get as close to nature as possible. Um, I can't stress enough that, you know, depending on the time of year or route, it varies so much. So even if you've done the Rocky Mountaineer in the past, doing it again in 2021, it's going to be a, a completely different experience. And all that time, our guest um, experience hosts will be taking care of your every need. And that's on the food, beverage, culinary side of things, but also storytelling, narration, really telling that the history of the Rocky Mountaineer, the history of the regions and the territories that you're traveling to. And uh, what's so amazing about the Rocky Mountaineer experience is that it does tell the, tell the story, the history of Canada, how it all became uh, one nation and uh, really joined the country together. So for anyone who's a, a train buff, absolutely, this is for you. Anyone who's a history buff uh, absolutely this is for you as well and a lot of our hosts are actually locals to the 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 areas that you will be traveling through whether that's the okanagan or the shushwap or northern alberta fraser valley in vancouver up to whistler so they really have this great insiders perspective and uh you, you know why not uh, learn a few things along the way while you're sitting in the laps of luxury and then at the end of the day the train will roll up into the station um probably sometime between uh, 5 and 7 p.m., just depending on the route, you'll be transferred to your hotel. And then the evening is up to you. Uh, you absolutely could just uh, rest and relax at the hotel, maybe grab a quick bite. I promise you, you won't go hungry, though. A lot of our guests find that they don't even have enough space for dinner. Uh, but then you do it all again the next day, just depending on uh, the length of the itinerary that you're doing. So you, you, you definitely want to get a little bit of shut eye because, as you can see, it is a pretty uh, full pack day, even though you're just sitting around on a train. There's a lot that's involved in that. Um, but when it comes to putting together your Rocky Mountaineer journey, we like to think that there's four very important components uh, for that. Choosing your rail route. So uh, where I mentioned Rainforest to the Gold Rush, Journey Through the Clouds, First Passage to the West, that's step one. Then let's talk about your service levels while you're on the train and off the train. We have gold leaf and silver leaf to choose from. Both are great options. It really just comes down to what type of traveler you are and maybe uh, what you're trying to fit into your budget and then choosing the season that you travel in. As I mentioned, we uh, start operating in April all the way through the beginning of October. So whether it's spring, summer and fall, we do have different experiences available for you. And then 
what are you going to do off the train, right? Customizing your package because we know you're not going to travel all the way from Ontario to BC or Alberta for two or three days on the train and then fly back home. We've been cooped up for so long. I think everybody wants to get their money's worth. So why not really uh, explore those destinations that you're going to? So we can absolutely talk about uh, how to do that. And there's so many different options for every type of traveler. Uh, but let's start off with the routes. I'm going to jump into first passage to the west. This is probably our most iconic, our most popular. For those of you who think of Alberta and BC, maybe you've never been before, uh, this really tells the tale of uh, the Canadian West and again, the history of Canada. It's a two-day rail journey uh, connecting Vancouver to Lake Louise and Banff through Kamloops. Now, you'll notice on the Alberta side of things, you have two options there, Lake Louise or Banff. You wouldn't be going to either of them, so it really just depends on where you want to start your journey. Uh, it might be easier to fly into Calgary, spend a night there, and then uh, start in Banff, move to, lay, um, to Kamloops for your overnight, and then Vancouver. But again, you can absolutely do this vice versa. This is our most historic route. Um, it really packs a punch just in terms of what you get to see. Uh, you'll be on the oldest railroad tracks uh, in the region uh, in Canada. Uh, dating back to the 1860s even, you'll get to see Craig Alachi and the last spike. You'll be going through the spiral tunnels, which are just an engineering marvel. So again, for anyone who's a really big train buff and uh, you want a really unique experience, I mean, th this is one of a kind. Um, just the way that they were able to sort of carve through the mountains, go through these dark tunnels, um, sort of twirl around and then come out the other side. It, it really was a collaborative effort between Canadians, European engineers, even the US. So, um, you know, as we see today, uh, everything takes a lot of teamwork to get off the ground, and this is no exception. But it's also a very accessible route just because you have two main outposts in Vancouver and Calgary. So, super easy for flights for those looking at a shorter itinerary, or if you've never done uh, the Can Canadian West Coast before, this is just going to check everything off that list. Um, some of the highlights to know the Vermilion. Lakes. Uh, I mean, everyone knows Lake Louise and the, the beautiful, clear, crystal uh, waters, but uh, there's lakes that are just scattered throughout southern BC and Alberta that absolutely rival that. Um, you'll be moving from the mild temperate climates of the uh, Pacific West Coast in Vancouver through the lush green Fraser Valleys and canyons and the Thompson River, uh, then getting into the elevation after Kamloops, so Stony Creek Bridge, Hell's Gate is another other iconic sort of setting. Uh, Castle Mountain is not to be missed. I mean, you absolutely can't miss it unless you were sleeping on the train. So there's so many of these uh, iconic shots that you'll get to see up close and personal. Um, and another question we get asked is, well, is it better to be on the left side of the train or the right side of the train, uh, front or back? It really doesn't matter because uh, it's so open and airy and expansive window space that uh, no matter where you are on the train, you're going to be able to catch an amazing view. Now moving over to Journey Through the Clouds, you'll notice that that leg between Vancouver and Kamloops is actually the exact same as you'll find on First Passage to the West. Uh, but after day two, uh, leaving that uh, beautiful dry desert Okanagan, Shushwap area, you take a northern turn up to Jasper, and this really takes you into the heart of the BC and Alberta wilderness. This is some untouched territories that you really can't access any other way, even by car. Uh, but if you really want to see the, the majesty and marvel at the mountains, I mean, Journey Through the Clouds absolutely has it all. Here you see in this shot, uh, Mount Robson, which is actually the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. So uh, it's pretty impressive. If you can actually even see the peak of it, um, you might get lucky in the summer, but most of the time it's actually shrouded in clouds uh, and mist. It has its own weather station. It's so high up. It's like a scene out of Lord of the Rings, but um, traveling up to Jasper, which is 
sometimes that forgotten jewel of uh, Alberta's north. We talk about Lake Louise and Banff so much, but if you've already done that uh, and you want to try something new, really go uh, into the outdoors and uh, have that adventurous spirit. Jasper's uh, a great combination of those two areas uh, and doing it in such a secluded setting. It's, it's pretty unique. Um, some of the highlights there, again, Mount Robson, not to be missed, uh, but you will start to see a little bit more of a change in the seasons uh, with the weather. So uh, depending on the time of year that you're traveling, those those beautiful, lush, rich uh, green forests could be turning into those auburn and gold and red colors um, in the north. The Pyramid Falls is another uh, scenic vista uh, not quite niagara falls or anything like that but a, a beautiful setting and backdrop to sort of go by and, and really it's the soundtrack of the wilderness um, but if you're a nature and forest lover uh, journey through the clouds is absolutely going to check that off your list and then once you get to jasper you can absolutely work your way down the columbia ice fields on one of our coach tours so then you're connecting with lake louise and Banff, flying back out of calgary or vice versa again you can do them in any direction so uh, you won't be too, too remote. You're, you're always uh, within earshot of getting back to uh, um, some of the other destinations. But uh, now we move over to Rainforest and uh, to the Gold Rush. And this is personally my favorite. I think it's just so unique and different from the other routes. Uh, for me, I actually lived in Vancouver for three years. My wife is from there. So I got to travel around BC and uh, explore the North a little bit more. And uh, this is just something that's a little bit different that you won't find anywhere else. Starting in Vancouver, actually at our North Vancouver station, it's a half day journey up to Whistler. So it's a little bit longer of a train itinerary, three days rather than two days but what's really nice about this is you'll get into Whistler um, in the early afternoon so you'll actually have a lot of time to spend in destination rather than when you're going to Kamloops or Quesnel getting there later in the night um, and anyone who's been to Whistler since the 2010 Olympics they've just done such an amazing job revitalizing it renovating it world-class hotels, five-star restaurants, shopping. Whistler Village is just like so walkable. There's so much to see and do that even an afternoon and an evening, uh, you, you can really pack your itinerary in there. They also have such a great uh, appreciation for indigenous culture, art. There's the uh, the Luwat Center uh, that's state-of-the-art, very interactive. So again, if you wanna keep that learning uh, sort of experience going uh, while you're on and off the train, you know, there's so much to see and do in Whistler. But then from there, you know, starting again, and that those temperate mild climates of Vancouver, carving uh, on the, the mountainside, looking over Howe Sound and beautiful ocean views, um, working your way north into the uh, the really deep uh, secluded parts of British Columbia, you're probably thinking to yourself right now, Quesnel, Quesnel. Uh, I've never heard of this place before, um, but this is, uh, it, it was a, a pretty big deal back in the 1800s, early 1900s with the gold rush as well. That's where the name came from. So this is a really fun, quaint place to uh, stop over for the night. Uh, not a, a terrible a ton of things to do while you're actually there, but uh, it's pretty fun in the summer when it really comes alive. I would caution for rainforest to the gold rush. Uh, it's a little bit more seasonal. It starts a week or so later than the other routes and it ends a week or so earlier as well. So really, if you're looking at a summer um, itinerary and you want to do something a little bit different, again, maybe you spent more time in the big cities, um, rainforest to the gold rush is a great option from Quesnel. You take an even more Northern turn and then coming down through Jasper, but you will still get to see Mount Robson. So that's a highlight that uh, won't be missed either way. But I think this one has the most diversity in terms of geography and topography. You're gonna notice the change of uh, climates and temperatures and elevation. There's just like, it, it packs everything into this itinerary. So uh, for those who wanna go a little bit more off the beaten path, 
I think Rainforest of the Gold Rush is an absolute gem. So now that we've talked about where you can go while you're on the train, let's talk about how you want to spend your time on the train. I had talked about our two different service levels of Gold Leaf and Silver Leaf. Some of you might be wondering, wait, I thought there was a third one. Wasn't there a Red Leaf? Well, that has gone the way of the Dodo. We jokingly refer to Red Leaf as Dead Leaf. It hasn't been around for about six or seven years. And uh, interestingly enough, we took the Red Leaf train cars and completely stripped them down to their chassis. Uh, I think we actually have a YouTube video of this uh, just sort of hyper sped up and uh, you can see the sort of disassembling of the red leaf train car and then them building it up uh, into the silver leaf car so they're super new and refreshed um, a, a little bit more of an elevated experience so what you'll notice the the major difference between gold leaf and silver leaf is the uh, the custom by level coach on on gold leaf so it is a bit of a double decker you actually have your your uh, seating area on the top level um, with a uh, glass dome ceiling. On the lower level, you have your exclusive dining lounge and then a large uh, expansive outdoor viewing platform that can probably accommodate about 10 or 12 people at a time. Um, the two levels are connected via a circular staircase, but if you're wondering, oh, I have accessibility issues or a wheelchair, uh, is Gold Leaf really for me? Yes, absolutely. Gold Leaf can accommodate you. We do have an elevated lift uh, that can accommodate a wheelchair, so uh, it might just take a little bit more time, but yes, absolutely. We can get you up and down, back and forth, no problem at all, and our guest service team will be there to help you every step of the way. Having said that, uh, if you're a traveler that just likes to sit back and relax, set it and forget it, Gold Leaf is an amazing experience, uh, very open and airy, very interactive. Um, so let's just jump into that. Let's start with Silver Leaf, just so you can see uh, what the amazing uh, views are like from on the train. Just in terms of comfort level, Silver Leaf and Gold Leaf, exactly the same seats, exact same amount of pitch or leg room. Um, the, the seats on both Gold Leaf and Silver Leaf, they do swivel. So if you're a group of four, you can actually sit face to face which is nice but the difference in silver leaf is that it is silver at your service so if you want to, to be weighted on hand and foot you know silver leaf does that for you your breakfast your snacks your lunches are brought to you and you're probably wondering well how good could the the food be on a train uh is it like box lunches or sandwiches or anything like that no absolutely not each train car has a dedicated uh, culinary station and kitchen. So they're preparing this food hot and ready on the train. Um, Silverleaf, you'll probably have three different options in terms of your breakfast and three different options in terms of your uh, lunch. Uh, but what I think really sets Silverleaf uh, apart is that it's so open and airy. It's almost eight foot ceilings. The, the views that you get through the windows that are almost floor to ceiling, is, it's just so expansive. So if you're a photographer, um, uh, a videographer, uh, want to get that perfect selfie. Silverleaf absolutely um, can do that for you. You'll also notice in the top right picture, there is a door there. It's not quite as expansive as the Gold Leaf outdoor viewing platform, but that breezeway can accommodate uh, maybe four or five people at a time. So if you still want to get up, stretch your legs, um, get as close to nature as possible and uh, get some fresh air absolutely you can do that on silver leaf now having said that gold leaf is gold for a reason um it doesn't get any better than this so you do have that elevated viewing uh seating area so you're just at a little bit of a higher vantage point so it opens everything up you get a tremendous amount of natural light through the glass dome. It's just such an amazing, unique experience. And then going down to the uh, exclusive dining car for your breakfast and lunch. Uh, I mean, if you're a foodie, uh, a wine lover connoisseur, and you, you want to experience this amazing journey, you know, at a five-star level, well, you cannot go wrong uh, with Gold Leaf. And there you see a, a really great view of our outdoor platform that's quite expansive. So uh, Gold Leaf really just takes it to the next level, has a little bit more to offer. So again, uh, people wonder, well, is the food going to kick it up an another notch? Well, it's great on silver leaf, but on gold leaf, you do have a more expanded kitchen. So uh, I can't tell you exactly what the menus are going to be because we try to be hyper local. Uh, everything sourced 
from the regions that the train is traveling to and from. Everything's seasonal based on the time of year. But yes, when you're out in Vancouver, maybe it's going to be a delicious vegetable risotto with uh, Pacific rock prawns or maybe some steelhead salmon prepared freshly uh, uh, for, your, for your lunch. What I can show you is uh, what might be available to you again, uh, going through BC and Alberta, you're going to want to dig deep into those uh, beautiful Okanagan wines that uh, you have at your disposal. Um, but you're going to have a little bit more of an expanded menu when you're on Gold Leaf, probably four or five options. And yes, we can um, accommodate any sort of uh, dietary restriction, allergy restriction, if you're gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, we have you covered. Uh, work with your travel advisor, send the information in as early as possible, just so we're aware of it. But even on the spot, yes, absolutely, because it's being prepared hot and fresh for you, we can um, make any sort of last minute change. The only thing that we aren't really able to do are religious requests such as kosher or halal, just because we don't have the ability to do that while we're on the train. So now that you've seen what gold leaf and silver leaf look like while you're traveling on the rail route, uh, let's extend that luxury to when you're off the train at the hotels, because that's an important part too. You've had a long day of sightseeing and traveling on the train. Maybe you just want to relax. Well, we have you covered with silver leaf and gold leaf as well. And again, there's no wrong answer. It just comes down to how you want to spend your time while you're off the train. Now, you might be wondering, is it possible to do a silver leaf train with a gold leaf hotel or a gold leaf train, silver leaf hotel, vice versa, mix and match? Yes, absolutely. And that's what makes Rocky Mountaineers so great is the customizability. Um, so here are just some of the, the great partners that we work with. Um, on the silver leaf side of things, you know, these are going to be your three and uh, three and a half star to four star really reputable brands, your Sheridans, your Marriott's, they're going to be very comfortable, uh, great locations, lots of amenities. What's really nice about the Silverleaf Hotel is if you want to be smack dab in downtown Banff, uh, you can absolutely do that with the Silverleaf Hotel. There's lots of availability. So you're going to have a little bit more in the way of options. Um, but again, if you want to go gold all the way through on the train, off the train while you're at the hotels, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, these are your once in a lifetime iconic uh, properties, the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise, the Chateau Jasper, the Rimrock Hotel in Banff. It does not get better than this, but caution a word to the wise. If you are someone who wants to be pampered and do gold all the way through, especially during our peak seasons, you are going to want to get on this early because they're always the first to go in terms of availability. You do also have the option of upgrading to a luxury room. If you want a mountain view room or an ocean or an ocean view room in uh, Vancouver, a lake view room in uh, Lake Louise, uh, you can absolutely add that on. But, um, you know, as you can imagine, there's others who are thinking the exact same thing. So you definitely want to get a, want to get on that a little bit earlier. The other thing to note about our gold leaf hotels, uh, they can be a little bit more secluded because literally they might be built on the side of a mountain cliff or something like that when it comes to the Rimrock um, in Jasper, some of those uh, more uh, remote destinations, they can be a little bit further from that downtown strip. So just keep that in mind when you're putting together your itinerary. Again, work with your travel um, consultant. They have uh, all the info and know-how on you know, piecing those uh, together just so you have the perfect itinerary for you. So we've talked about where the train goes. We talked about what life is like on the train, off the train. Let's talk about those different destinations because there's so much to see and do when you're off the Rocky Mountaineer. And this is what's going to set your itinerary apart from maybe your family or friends who have done this in the past. Um, let's start with Banff in the East. Everybody knows about it. It's been on, uh, you know, probably your bucket or dream list for quite some time. Similar to Whistler that we talked about, you know, it's come a long way since the, uh, the 1988 Olympics in the 90s. It's not that sleepy little ski town anymore. It is a world-class Four Seasons resort that uh, really just offers absolutely everything and anything that you could possibly want. Uh, outdoors, yes, you've got it uh, with Banff National Park, Yoho National Park. Uh, you have the, uh, the amazing hot springs, so how could you go all the way to Banff and not try those? Um, 
and you could do a hike up Tunnel Mountain um, and then in the afternoon go for a, a gourmet meal on the strip downtown Banff do the gondola a helicopter tour really uh, I can't think of another destination where you can pack so much into one or two days uh, everything right at your fingertips so Absolutely, you're going to want to spend at least a couple nights in Banff, not to be missed, just a short transfer from Calgary as well. So a great way to start or end your trip. Now moving a little bit more into the wilderness, we've got Banff's uh, sister or cousin there, uh, Lake Louise you know what 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 can i really say to it that you haven't heard before um it's another world class destination that people come from all over the globe to experience uh spring summer fall winter just the natural beauty of the landscape is always on display you're not going to have as much to see and do in terms of shopping or restaurants but uh if you can just hang out in the the, the chateau uh lake louise be pampered maybe have a five star meal with a, a spa day uh, hang out by the lake, have an adult beverage, go for a nice hike or a walk around the lake. I mean, you know, what better place to just sort of unplug and uh, spend a couple days. That's another thing I should mention. Uh, the Rocky Mountaineer is a very unplugged experience. Uh, while you're on the train, there is no Wi-Fi. So it's a nature documentary outside your window. But uh, just wanted to mention that as well. There's no TV screens. There is the ability to charge your iPhone or smartphone phone or tablet but uh, really you're just going to want to immerse yourself in the scenery just like Lake Louise um, there's really no better place that showcases Alberta's great outdoors now moving up north to Jasper it's that third one that maybe you forgot about but uh, here's why I'm going to tell you it's a great destination for you especially if you've already done Banff you've already done Lake Louise you're going in the summer and you want to see uh, what the Canadian North has uh, in uh, for you. What I love about Jasper is that it combines a really quaint, cool downtown, just like Banff. Uh, it's not as big, but it's very walkable. You can probably do the whole stretch in about 30 minutes or so. Um, it, it's a little bit more uh, relaxed setting that you might find there but then if you want to get your hands dirty and you want to do some whitewater rafting you want to do the skywalk you want to do a boat tour um the gondola you know all of that is available to you and such a remote serene setting i mean if you're uh, tired of being cooped up in the city and you really want to connect with nature. I mean, Jasper is, I can't think of a better place to do it. Again, very easy to connect Jasper with one of our train routes, but also with one of our coach tours through the Columbia ice field. And then let's move over to the wet wild west coast of Vancouver. Um, I've never seen a, a big city sort of combine outdoors, nature, um, everything that the geography has to offer. You've got the oceans there. You've got the backdrop of the mountains just past North Vancouver. Stanley Park in the bottom right hand corner, 10 times bigger than Central Park, but nobody talks about it nearly as much. Just steps away from downtown Vancouver. You've got beaches. You've got the seawall where it's uh, beautiful almost any time of year. You can go for a run around there or leisurely stroll, paddle boats, going to Granville Island. Look at this beautiful picture of the Capilano Suspension Bridge in North Vancouver. Um, just a short uh, 10, 15 minute sea bus ride. That's, that's actually their mode of transit. That's their TTC or GO train, their local transit, you know, from Vancouver to North Vancouver. It just costs three bucks um, and you can be amongst the treetops. It feels like, you know, you're in an Amazonian setting or something like that. Any time of year, Vancouver just has so much to offer. Whether you want to do a day trip to Whistler or spend some more times there, uh, it's just, you know, a short hour or so drive. Um, heading over to the island, Victoria, Qualicum, uh, Beach, Tofino in the summer, absolutely amazing. You know, um, there's so much to see and do over there, even better weather I find in uh, uh, Vancouver Island. So definitely uh, a great way to sort of extend your itinerary and just check all of those destinations off your list. So now let's add that final piece of the puzzle. You know which route you wanna do, you know what directions you wanna do, you know what you wanna add on before and after the train, 
Now let's lock it in. When do you want to travel? So we always get asked that question. When's the best time to do the Rocky Mountain year? And I always say there's no wrong answer except for the winter because we're not operating. Uh, but if we did, I'm sure it'd be unbelievable as well. But that's uh, that's mother nature for you in Canada. Um, but having said that, spring, summer, and the fall, there is so much available to you. Let's start with the spring, late April, moving through May. It's got this beautiful awakening and energy to it, depending on if you're spending more time in Lake Louise and Banff. Uh, the, the thaw of the winter season is coming. It's got such a, an energy in the air. The wildlife are starting to come out of hibernation. You might need to pack a couple of layers because uh, yeah, the, the weather can be finicky. Uh, you might encounter a little bit of snow, but hey, that's why you go to these mountain ranges for sure. But it's such a relaxed time of traveling and then moving towards Vancouver through the Okanagan. Spring uh, hits on the West Coast, maybe about a month or so early. So if you're traveling in April or May, you know, it's going to be in full bloom. The flowers are going to be out. Uh, nature is going to be surrounding you. Those beautiful greens and bright colors of the season are, are going to be on full display. But having said that, summer is the most popular time to travel travel in Canada for a reason. That's why people come from all over the world to sort of um, uh, explore uh, this great country. So if you're someone who likes the hustle and bustle, if you like to have everything on display, um, then, you know, summer cannot be beat, whether you're spending more time in BC, whether you're spending more time in uh, Southern Alberta, Northern Alberta, weather is going to be beautiful. But again, book early and book often because everything in terms of flights, hotels, restaurants, sightseeing, that is all at a premium during the summer. So uh, you're going to want to be an early booker with that. Now let's move into the autumn. Personally, my favorite time to travel. Um, it's just such a, a calm and relaxed. You're, you're getting that tailwind, the, the back end of the summer season. So still beautiful weather, um, a little bit more calm, but uh, you're going to start seeing those seasonal changes, uh, especially in the northern routes. You're going to start seeing those beautiful greens start turning into those lush reds and crisp oranges and things like that. The wildlife probably has tapered off by now. They're getting ready for their hibernation as well. But uh, it's a very, very popular time to travel. I think September for 2021 is almost sold out. So if you're someone who wants to uh, explore Canada in the fall, you're definitely going to want to look into that early. Now, let's just talk about some of the different ways that you can experience those add-on activities while you're off the train. Really, it doesn't matter if you want to travel five-star luxury all the way through or if you want to be adventurous and get your hands dirty, we've got you covered. We have something like 80 to 90 different packages with Rocky Mountaineer. So you can mix, match, and combine as you like. Whether it's going up and down the Columbia Ice Field, doing the Ice Explorer, how iconic and Canadian is that? You know, this massive truck with five foot wheels, tires, going up a glacier, you know, um, you know, check your Canadian card right there. The Banff gondola, uh, a helicopter tour uh, in the Rockies, just absolutely beautiful weather permitting. Uh, look at those amazing bright colors in Victoria and Butcher Gardens. Um, so you can add as much or as little as you want on this. Um, for those of you who maybe want to uh, see and do a lot, but you know, you want to have it all planned out for you, you don't want to get your hands dirty, a sightseeing tour is a great day, great way to sort of combine destinations. Uh, you can get out, walk around, uh, get a sense of the scenery, get some great pictures, head back on the bus, you can cover a lot of ground doing it that way. And then for those of you who have maybe been there, done that, you want to do things at your own pace, uh, especially maybe, you know, during this post-COVID landscape, uh, big groups and crowds are not for you. Why not do a self-drive exploration uh, with a rental car option? You could fly into Calgary, pick up a rental car, spend some time in Lake Louise and Banff, head up to Jasper on your own, do all those amazing sightseeing things, drop off the car and then start your train journey, heading over to Vancouver and checking out the island afterwards or Whistler. I mean, really the only limitation is your creativity and working with your travel advisor to put it all together. So I know I talked about a few shorter itineraries, just the base two or three days while you're on the train. 
Again, I think you're going to want to expand that for this upcoming year. Uh, let's talk about some of our more popular longer itineraries. First Passage to the West in the upper left-hand corner. This is a great tight itinerary that packs a real punch, either starting or ending in Vancouver. You spend one night there, one night in Kamloops on the train, heading over to Banff and Lake Louise for two nights each. This is where you're going to be doing your sightseeing tours of Lake Louise, Banff National Park, helicopter uh, tours, um, the Banff Gondola, the Columbia Ice Field, and then finishing it off uh, with one night in Calgary. I mean, for, for six or seven days, uh, I can't imagine uh, trying to fit anything more in there. Um, the Explorer options for Journey Through the Clouds and Rainforest to the Gold Rush are really great options for spending a little bit more time in that untamed northern parts of Alberta in Jasper. You really dig deep in there, uh, but there you can sort of see combining that with the coach tour down to Lake Louise and Banff to sort of extend it into a longer itinerary. And now if you've been sitting here for the past 45 minutes or so thinking everything that I've said, uh, yes, sign me up. I want to do it. Well, maybe the Grand Rail Circle journey is for you. We have anything between two days all the way up to 13 and everything in between. So this would be combining two or more of our routes. You could start in Vancouver, work your way up through Whistler, Quenelle to Jasper, spend some time there, work your way down the Columbia Ice Field, two nights in Lake Louise, three nights in Banff, then take the first passage to the west back through Kamloops, finish it off in Vancouver. Uh, I'm exhausted just thinking about it, but uh, absolutely, um, you, you know, uh, you can't uh, pack any more into an itinerary than one of our Grand Rail Circles. So uh, if there's any one of these itineraries that you see and you really like, but you're thinking to yourself, you know what? 90% of it, 95% of it's great, but I'm not such a fan of heights. Maybe I don't want to do the helicopter tour. No problem at all. Take that out of your itinerary. The, the cost will be refunded to you. Maybe you can add on a different sightseeing tour or extend your trip. So this is where the game comes in, the customizability. Um, maybe if you're wondering, is the Rocky Mountaineer really for me? I'm used to doing uh, cruises or fun in the sun uh, destinations. Well, uh, I want to tell you, absolutely, if you're from that cruiser demographic, you're going to fit in just fine on the Rocky Mountaineer. Something like 70% of our guests have done a European river cruise. Um, in previous years, pairing it with an Alaskan cruise pre or post of your train journey has been such a popular uh, thing to do. If you think about it, if you're traveling all the way to Vancouver, why not do both of them at the same time if you're going to go all that way? So absolutely, uh, we like to even think of ourselves as a bit of a land cruise, that elegance and luxury, but you know, just in the, uh, the secluded uh, remote wilderness of BC and Alberta. Okay, well, let's talk about what we can do to get you on the train for 2021. Everyone loves a good deal, and we have a few great ones for you right now. Let's start with Mountain Bound, which has been extended to January 15th. If you're looking at your watch or your calendar, that is actually tomorrow, so you can still qualify for this. Uh, talk to your travel advisor about putting in your, your quote today. For those of you looking at a longer itinerary, eight days or more, this is a really great option because it throws in an extra hotel night, an extra airport transfer pre or post of your train journey, and then a dinner as well, because those are all things, let's be honest, that you're going to want anyway, so you might as well get them included. Of course, uh, as a CAA member, you're going to get a $200 merchandise credit for you to use while you're on the tra train, so you can bring back a, uh, a souvenir for you or your family or friends. Uh, but let's talk about the, uh, the offer that everyone's sort of uh, uh, buzzing about, that's our Canadian residence promo that was launched in December just before the holidays. Uh, first time ever, this is our best ever pricing from Rocky Mountaineer, up to $1,400 per couple. Uh, but if you're traveling by yourself, no problem, we've got you covered. Really, it just depends on what package that you're looking at, but you could have a cost savings of anywhere between five to $700. The great thing about this is 
There are no restrictions. There's no blackout dates. It's available on all packages except for our rail only. So three days and longer. This is just for Canadian residents. I know you've been putting it off saying, yes, I want to travel through Canada. Check out our great nation. Well, this is the year to do it. And the pricing has never been better. So if you've ever felt that Rocky Mountain Euro was just a little bit out of your price range, uh, you know, this is going to be the year to do it. If you wanted to do it and thought, well, I really want to do gold leaf again, this is the year that you can really sort of extend your budget and uh, stretch it a little bit more with these cost savings. Now, the best part of our mountain bound promotion and our Canadian residence offer, you can book today with our new enhanced flexible booking policy. So what do I mean by that? Um, for all of the 2021 season, we have an enacted this new policy. Uh, flexibility is you know, a, a new word that's going around in the travel industry that I think is really important to you, the consumer. So we wanna make sure that we're following through on that. When you make your, your booking, put down your deposit, you will have a 60 day risk-free refundable window uh, where you can cancel your Rocky Mountaineer journey for any reason. Um, no harm, no foul. You will just have those funds refunded to you. No questions asked. Beyond those 60 days, what we're also offering are two free date changes up to 60 days before your travel date. So if you're set to travel September 1st, up to 60 days, you can, uh, up to 60 days before your travel date, you are able to change your date either later in the season, you can move it to 2022, even 2023. So how about that for giving you a little bit of a leash and timeline to work with? And then the other thing we're going to offer is a name change. So um, this would be uh, a valid up to 30 days before your travel date. As long as one of the names on your booking stays the same, you are able to do name changes on the other. Um, and because you can book with these promotions, if you move your travel dates, if you do a name change, yes, the promotion will transfer with you. So you don't have to worry about losing out on one of these really great offers. So I, I hope that's been informative. Um, I cannot wait for April 27th to be here. Uh, hopefully you can see the excitement in my eyes, hear it in my voice. Um, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Um, uh, all I can say is uh, I'm excited for things to get back to normal um, or whatever the new normal is. Uh, we have been working with CAA for such a long time. They're, they're one of our most trusted travel partners. So I can say this with absolute confidence as well, um, that you can rely on them to give you the best information, put together the best package for you. Um, th there's really no one better in the business than CAA. They have you covered. So with that, um, I'll turn it back over to Leslie. Um, here are all the various locations. Uh, so get in touch with your travel advisor today in your local area. And uh, we're really excited to see you on the train. All right. Thank you so much, Tyler, for taking uh, us down some of these lovely itineraries and amazing destinations with Rocky Mountaineer. I know I want to hop on one right away. Um, can't wait. For uh, everybody else, if you have any questions, you can reach out to any of our travel professionals in our stores. Again, I am Leslie Scarf. I'm in the Stittsville office. And uh, we are more than happy to help you with any concerns, questions, reservations, everything. We're super excited to, uh, to meet with you all. Thanks again, everybody. Uh, Tyler Harrison here from Rocky Mountaineer signing off. Have a great day. Stay safe. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the train in 2021. Thank you, everyone.